my way to a strategic burr at Scotland's centre, where the lowlands meet the highlands. It sits at the lowest bridging point of the Forth, before the river meanders and widens into the tidal firth. It's good to be back in Stirling, a beautiful city, dripping with history. High on top of an ancient volcanic plug stands Stirling's medieval castle. As I learned in Edinburgh, the landscape of this region offered the Scots enviable strategic vantage points from which kingdoms were defended and legends created. If anybody doubts the power of history, consider the case of William Wallace, executed by the English more than 700 years ago in 1305. The 1995 movie about him, Braveheart, was accused of propagandising, driving Scottish people towards voting for independence. But in fairness to Mel Gibson, he wasn't the first person to regard Wallace as a hero. And today, he has countless devotees. At the towering William Wallace Monument, I've come to meet Gordon Aitken, a member of the William Wallace Society. Gordon, <laughs> that is a powerful T-shirt. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, you're very devoted to William Wallace. Yes, I am devoted to William Wallace. William Wallace basically is Scotland uh, for me. How much do we actually know about William Wallace? Can we separate myth from history? There are not very many facts about William Wallace. We know about the battles that he took part in. Uh, we know about Lanark, we know about Stirling Brig, we know about Falkirk, and we know about his execution down in London. The William Wallace Monument was erected here to overlook the site of his most famous victory, the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Ascending the 246 steps, provides a panorama of the battlefield. Gordon, my calf muscles are on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's a very stiff claim indeed, Michael. The tower is perched on Abbey Craig, a volcanic plug that rises over 100 metres. The view repays the climb. How did you first become so excited about William Wallace yourself? I was always interested in history at school and we were taught the usual stuff like the Battle of Hastings, Waterloo, etc, etc. The only thing we weren't taught was the history of our own nation. I discovered William Wallace when I was working as a young apprentice and a guy that was working with me told me you should read these books and I was instantly hooked. This was places that I knew about battles that I'd never heard about before, and it was my country's history, which I really loved. And what is it about Wallace that grips you? Wallace, to me, was... He was uncompromising. He bowed his head to no one, and what he wanted was to see his country free from the English king's subjection. William Wallace's victory here was the greatest moment of triumph during the Scottish rebellion against the English. So orient me, if you would. The main battle took place just slightly to the left of the castle. What kind of numbers would the English have altogether? Probably around 20 to 25,000. And the Scots? The Scots, between five and 8,000. Huh. OK, so you're William Wallace and you've got inferior numbers. How do you hope to defeat the English? What's the tactic? The tactic was to actually be there to meet them as they came over the bridge. The Scots army allowed so many of the English army to get across. They closed off the bridge and they started pushing with their spears, pushing the English army towards the small loop in the river there. And that was the main killing ground. The English army, of course, had been undefeated in battle up to that point. They thought they only had to turn up and the battle would be won. So there was a, a certain amount of arrogance in the, the way that they went about it. For a Scots army of, for the most part, ordinary men, it was an incredible victory. But it turned William Wallace into a hunted man. He was eventually captured and taken to London, where he was tried for treason against King Edward I of England and condemned to death. The sentence was pronounced to be dragged through the streets six miles to Smithfield, where he would be hung, drawn and quartered. 
Wallace was hanged until he was almost dead. He was cut from chest down to stomach and the executioner reached in, pulled out his, his entrails, his, his heart and threw it into the fire. A particularly barbarous, uh, horrific execution. 700 years later, in 2005, led by the William Wallace Society, these events were commemorated on the spot where they took place. On the day of the anniversary, over a thousand of us walked the six miles where Wallace was dragged to his place of execution at Smithfield. Uh, Wallace never had a funeral and we wanted to do something about it, so we went into the the church of St Bartholomew the Great, which was right beside the site at Smithfield, which would have been there when Wallace was executed. And we had a service, we had an empty coffin, and at some point during the service, everyone lined up and they dropped a note, a miniature of whiskey, a poem, whatever they thought was suitable to put in for, for William Wallace. Uh, it was a fantastic day. It was an absolutely amazing day. I'm struck by the strength of feeling for William Wallace seven centuries after his death. And I find it remarkable that his story continues to influence Scottish identity today.